Hey gang, it's Coach Mark Logue here and I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. If you're down under in Australia or if you're in Ireland or England or if you're in uh, Miami or if you're all the way on the West Coast in California, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, this video today is a reminder for you around the world of values and disc disc and values now we've all talked about this in our coaching calls all of you have had a disc and values analysis which you've done and for most of you we've just we've discussed this in person we've actually gone through this with you and it's a worthy reminder because here can be the challenge for most of us we get to know something and we leave the report in a drawer or in some file folder in our computer and we don't look at it again so this is a healthy reminder of your values which is the why you do what you do and your disc which is how you communicate how you occur to other people so we're just going to dive right in here and we're going to take a look at the values the values index is an interpretation of the work of dr. Edward Spranger and Gordon Alport and their study of human value they came up with a scale of values which basically speaks to our motivation, our drive, why we do what we do, what gets us out of bed in the morning, what are we passionate about, what are we passionate about moving forward towards in our day and in our life. So as we dive into values here, you can take a look on the screen. And these are in no particular order. Everybody has these values in their life to some degree. However, for most of us, we have one or two that rule our world. So the aesthetic, the aesthetic is as it sounds, it's the drive for harmony, it's the drive for beauty. Uh, you know, quick example, my wife and I, when we make dinner, Michaela makes dinner to taste great. When I make dinner, the plate also has to look good. So my aesthetic is higher than Michaela's and she always makes a comment around that. The second value here on the sheet is the, the drive for the economic. Now, many people say, oh, it's, I'm economically driven because I want to make a lot of money. And while that is a part of it, there's more to it. The economic is the drive for results. It's a drive for value. It's the drive for the bottom line. It's the bottom line return. People who are economically driven, give them the value to whatever it is you're doing or saying and give it to them quickly. The third one is the individualistic, the drive to stand out, the drive to be significant, the drive to be seen, the drive to be different. If anybody's ever been to a rock concert and seen a rock star or a rock band, they're standing in front of 100,000 people. They have a high individualistic drive. So if there's a speaker or a motivational speaker who's in front of thousands of people, they're highly significantly driven. They've got a high individualistic drive. Political. Political basically means that the buck stops here. You want the power. You want the ability to make a change, to have the ability to influence other people. Typically, political people are leaders. They are the leaders and owners of companies. They are the people who affect change because they want to influence the world. The altruistic, they have a drive to give, to be good for others, to um, Improve the humanitarian condition to improve the planet, to save the planet. That brings us to the regulatory. The regulatory is that drive for order, for structure, for routine, for the implementation of rules. It's the blue within all of us. It is the rules. Stay within the lines. Drive within the lines. And then we have the value of theory. There are many people who live a life in education. There are many people who live a life chasing understanding, chasing knowledge, and chasing more learning. All of these values, I invite you to go back to your values. Look at your values and look at what your top two values are. Because that's why you do what you do. So now let's take a dive into your DISC profile. Your DISC is how you communicate. It's how you show up for other people. It's how you show up for yourself. And very often we don't realize how we communicate to other people and how we occur to other people. Because that's something, that's a tendency we all have. We tend to live in our heads. And when we're in our head, living in our head, we're not connected with our body and we're not aware of how we're communicating. So let's dive through this. Disc D. 
The D is the driver. The D is the person who wants to get stuff done. They speak in the language of being demanding, being driven, being assertive. Some people would say they're aggressive. They're very competitive and they're incredibly direct. Their strengths are they are competitive. They fix problems. Typically, you can see a D in the group because the D goes, just get out of my way. I'm going to fix this and I'm going to fix it now. They love creating change with the idea that that change will bring greater results. They're very goal-oriented. They're very driven towards getting results. They love a challenge and they're the big picture thinker. Think of the airline pilot who's flying that 747 at 35,000 feet or 33,000 feet. They see the world from a different vantage point. They are a very high D. They love to be the big picture thinker. Now, their limitations. The limitations for the D is they're poor listeners. They can be poor listeners. They're very selective with their listening. Because if what you're saying is not about what they want to do and achieve and get them their results, they tend to shut down and shut off. They can be seen as being argumentative and they can lack tact. Tact is that thing that you can make. My dad used to say, tact is the knack of making a point without making an enemy. Sometimes the D can appear arrogant. They can appear to be impatient. And the D can take on too much because the D has very strong confidence and belief in themselves. And they figure, we can get it done. Tips for the D. When you're communicating with the D, be direct, be quick, be to the point, be focused on the results. Tips for the D. If you're a D, slow it down, folks. Not everybody moves at your pace. Not everybody is you. So now it's the turn to look at the eye muscle. The eye muscle is the influencer in the group. They're the charismatic, outgoing smilers in the group. They have great handshakes. They're the optimistic ones in the bunch. They connect easily with people. And if you have a, a sales force, you want to have that sales force that has a strong high eye number. They love being in the midst of a crowd. They love people. They're optimistic. They're outgoing. They're charming. They're witty. They've got a great sense of humor. They're passionate. Mm, they're animated. And they're inviting to be with. You want to hang, hang about with them, hang around with them. Uh, they're just very friendly and they connect easily. Now, some of the limitations and struggles for the eye muscle is typically they're somewhat impulsive and they struggle with being disorganized. You can w tell when you're in an eye muscle uh, is office because you walk into their desk, there's paper all over the place, there's books all over the place, there's files all over the place. And when you ask them how they're doing, they'll say, I have a system and I know where everything is. Don't mess it up. Uh, so the other thing with the eye muscle is goal setting. A lot of eye muscles go big picture, but they do not sit down and write out a plan. So one of the challenges for the eye muscle is goal setting. So I would invite you, if you're an eye muscle, take a look at your goals and stop thinking it and start inking it. Put your plans on paper often as possible. That's the biggest, biggest difference you'd want to make in your life if you're an eye muscle is to plan it out, get clear on your plan and get an organization system. And I know, I know right now you're cringing just listening to this. That's the biggest challenge. And when you do that, and there's many successful eyes out there who have implemented more structure in their life, uh, they've just taken off like rockets. They're, they're world beaters. So let's look at the S muscle. The S muscle is the steady muscle. It is the stable muscle. They're very sweet. They're very kind. They're very patient. They're great listeners. Lots of coaches, lots of um, psychologists, lots of people who are in the world of empathy, in the medical world, uh, who, who require lots of empathy are S muscles. They're very understanding. You'll always get a friendly ear when there's an S muscle around. They're just great listeners. They're great team players. An S muscle on your team is the one who's going to keep the family together and who's going to avoid the conflict and keep the team together at all costs. Now, some of the limitations for the S muscle is, number one, they resist change. They love the status quo. And 
they do have a challenge delegating. Here's the biggest challenge for the S muscle is the delegation process. I worked with a woman for, gosh, over 20 years when I was in the mortgage business. She was wonderful at what she did. However, nobody else could do the job as well as she did. So as a result of her having stacks and stacks of paperwork and being the only person that she thought could do the job, um, she was overwhelmed. She was overwhelmed. And very often she was in my office two, three times a year. Uh, it would be a tearful breakdown. She would have to go through that energy release. And then we would come up with some system to help her delegate. So if you're an S muscle, figure out a way to delegate and get it off your desk because other people can do it also. Let's talk about the C muscle. The C is the cautious muscle, the conscientious muscle. The C is the one that you want to have on the team who will check, double check, and triple check your work. They will make sure the work is done right. They're incredibly precise. They're incredibly accurate. They have a system, and they have a system to check the system. You, you want to make sure you have a C muscle on your team because they will make sure you do it right. And you are following procedures, you're following protocols, you're following the laws. You want to make sure that that C muscle is the person who's managing any books or any computer systems uh, that you want to have in place in order to be uh, in alignment with compliance. They're very detail-oriented. They love tasks. They love getting stuff done. You put them in a room with a bunch of tasks for 10 hours with no contact. They love that. The C's are incredibly neat. They're incredibly organized. You can tell by the way they dress. They're meticulous in the way they dress. While they're not loud and garish with the way they dress, they're meticulous in the way they dress. Some of the limitations for the C muscle is they can be overly critical. They're incredibly judgmental of themselves and they have this need for perfection. And they have a, a tendency to bring that perfection and that judgmental eye onto other people and to situations. They can get stuck in the analysis part of the job or the task. There's the expression analysis paralysis and it is very, very apropos for the C muscle. So that is an overview of values and disc. I invite all of you right now to take a look at your own values, take a look at your own disc. Remember how you occur for other people. Remember how other people are occurring and showing up to you. And remember that in order to engage other people, speak their language first. Understand their values first. Because when you make it about them first, you create this thing called rapport. When there's rapport, there's connection. And when you have rapport and connection, you then have the ability to influence that other person. And if you're in a leadership role listening to this, please remember that, that get connected to them first then you can get what it is you need to get done. So that's my tips of the day for discs and values. And if you have any questions, you can please email me at mark at marklogue.org. I look forward to uh, hearing your feedback and hearing your comments. And I hope that you have an amazing day, outstanding day, as they love to say in the world of personal development. That's an overused word. word. Everybody's outstanding. So may you be outstanding. May you be you. And have a great day. Cheers.